Welcome everyone to Instant InDesign, the video podcast for learning template design and high-speed production skills. I'm your host, Gabriel Powell. And this is Episode 8, Automating Layouts with the Easy Catalog Plugin for InDesign, Part 2. In Episode 7, I introduced Easy Catalog, which is a database publishing solution for Adobe InDesign. I demonstrated how Easy Catalog can be used to automate the production of a catalog and a price list. Now I'm going to show you how to use Easy Catalog and InDesign together as a team to create a catalog template. Originally, this episode was going to walk you through the entire process from start to finish, but I soon discovered that there just wasn't enough time in one episode to cover everything, so I had to create an additional episode to cover the rest of the information. So in this episode, I'm going to walk you through the first two steps involved in creating a template. We'll start by studying the mock-up layout of the catalog, and then I'll show you how to use Easy Catalog to import the catalog data and configure it. And then in episode 9, I'll show you how to finish building the template. Let's take a look at the mock-up layout of the catalog in order to fully understand the design requirements that we're up against. This sample layout accurately represents the size, arrangement, and formatting of every graphical and textual element to be included in the publication. I recommend starting all of your template projects with a mock-up layout because it clarifies your project's requirements and it serves as the model from which your template will be constructed. Notice that each page can contain two columns of products. Each product can contain a name, an image, a description, a table of detailed information, and an optional sale logo. The category and subcategory information is displayed at the top edge of each page. The company name is displayed at the top of each page, and at the bottom of each page, the name of the catalog, the page number, and the phone number of the company is displayed. Now imagine producing this entire catalog using just InDesign. That would take quite a lot of time and effort. Fortunately, with the help of Easy Catalog, this catalog can be entirely automated. Let me show you how that's done. Since I've already created the mock-up layout, the next step is to use Easy Catalog to import the data into InDesign. All of the data for the catalog has been exported from a database as a comma delimited text file. So all I have to do is go up to the File menu, choose New, Easy Catalog Panel, and then New File Data Source and then locate my data source file, which is right here. I'll go ahead and click Open. Now that I've selected the data source, I need to configure it. Here in the content section of this dialog box, all of these options have been properly specified for me already. So I'm really only concerned with the sample section at the bottom of the dialog box. This is a sample of the data that I'm going to be importing. Right now, just the first six records are being displayed. If I scroll to the right, you can see all of the columns or fields of information that will be imported. Easy Catalog lets you determine the behavior of each of these fields. For example, this field here, Product Image, contains the name of the image to be imported for each record. All I need to do is specify where the folder of images is located. So with the Product Image column selected, I'll click the Options button, which opens the Field Options dialog box, and I'll select the Picture Content category. Here I can specify how I want the images to be scaled, how I want the images to be aligned. I'll go ahead and choose Top Center. And I can specify where the folder of images is located by clicking Choose right here. Those images are located in my Project Catalog folder inside of this Images folder. I'll go ahead and choose that. And the file path shows up in this field here. This extension field is very important. All of my images are in the TIFF file format, but I didn't include the file extension in the name of the image in my database. So I need to do that here. I'll go ahead and type in .tiff. Now if you've included the file extension when you type in the names of your images, you don't have to worry about this. You can skip this option. This replacement image option is very cool. If Easy Catalog can't locate a particular image when it's paginating the catalog, 
it can use the replacement image that you specify instead. That way, after the pagination is finished, it's obvious which images it didn't find. I'll go ahead and specify my replacement image. I'll click Choose, and it's inside of the Images folder all the way at the bottom. There it is. It's called Missing Image. I'll go ahead and open that. So that's how you format an image field. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now let me introduce you to some of the other field formatting options that Easy Catalog provides. Take this price field, for instance. Notice that each of these prices has a dollar sign in front of it. Now, if I didn't want that dollar sign, I could remove it by clicking on the Options button to open up the field options for the price field and then specifying a different format, such as pound or euro, or completely removing it altogether by choosing alphanumeric and clicking OK. So now it's disappeared. But in this catalog, I want that dollar sign, so I'll go ahead and add it back. I'll specify the currency format option and then the dollar sign. There are some other very important formatting options that you should be aware of as well. Let's say, for example, that this description column is a note column. And I want the word note to appear in front of each description. So I can do that by selecting the description column, clicking the Options button, and then in the General category, specifying the prefix note, followed by a colon and a space. As soon as I click OK, that information is added to the text. You can also apply a character style to the text, if you like. You can apply a suffix, and then there's this cleansing options area, which is very important. This area is used for cleansing your data before it's placed into InDesign. Think of it as a simple find and replace. So for example, let's say that your data contains a bulleted list with an asterisk symbol instead of a bullet character. All I have to do is type an asterisk, followed by an equals sign, and the bullet character that I would like to use. An easy catalog will locate each asterisk and replace it with a bullet character. If you have multiple cleansing options that you would like to insert, just separate them with a semicolon. So if I wanted to find capital GP and replace that with my name, I could. It's really that easy. If you wanted to find two spaces, just type two spaces equals one space. I think you get the picture. All right, I'll go ahead and clear these options because I really don't want them. I'll click OK. And since I'm done formatting all of these fields, I can click OK to this dialog to complete the importing of the data. And now that my data has been imported, an Easy Catalog data panel has been created. Notice that this looks just like a spreadsheet with rows and columns of data. Each row contains one record of information. Notice that all of the records we're looking at right now belong to the Tools category. And within this Tools category are several subcategories. Here, these records are part of the Hand Tools category. And these next records are part of another category called Levels, Lines, and Measuring Tools. Within the Hand Tools subcategory, notice that there are several products. Since these last two records contain the same product name, these belong to one product that contains two items. So really, we're looking at a flat view of the data. In order to make the data more useful, I need to combine it together into logical groupings. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Data Panel menu and choose Group. I'd first like to group by category. So I'll double-click this field and notice that it shows up over here in the Grouping Configuration area of the dialog. Next, I'd like to group by subcategory. So I'll double-click that field. And then I'd like to group by product name. So all of the records that share the same category name will be grouped together. And then within that grouping, all of the records that share the same subcategory name will be grouped together. And then within that level of grouping, all of the records that share the same product name will be grouped together. I'll go ahead and click OK, and that's exactly what has happened. So here we're looking at all of the categories. 
The Builder's Hardware category contains seven subcategories. I'll flip the triangle to see them all. Here we're looking at all of the subcategories. This particular subcategory contains three products. I'll flip that triangle, and here are all of the products. Now each of these products just contain one item. Let's see if I can find a product that contains multiple items. And here are a couple of them. Here's one that contains two, and here's one that contains even five. So this works. Everything's grouped together properly, but notice that it's in alphabetical order. The categories are in alphabetical order, and each of the subcategories are in alphabetical order. One of the greatest strengths of Easy Catalog is that it gives you full control over the organization of your data. I really don't want everything paginated in alphabetical order. So to control the order in which everything is paginated, I need to group these records differently. I'll first ungroup them, and I'll group them again, but this time I need to group them by their ID number. Notice that to the left side of the category column is a category ID column, which identifies the pagination order of the category. So the tools category is the first category that should be paginated. And if I scroll down, you can see that each of the categories has an ID number. And notice to the left side of the subcategory column is a subcategory ID column, which is used for the same purpose to determine the pagination order of all the subcategories within a category. And then to the left side of the product name column is a product sort column, which determines the pagination order of all of the products within a subcategory. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and choose group. This time, I'm going to double click the category ID to group first by that, then subcategory ID, and then product sort. I'll click OK, and now everything is organized by their ID number. But as a designer, looking at numbers is really not going to help you. What you want to see is the actual category name, subcategory name, and product name. So I can fix that. I'll go back to the group dialog, and I'll select the category ID field up here, and all the way down at the bottom of this dialog box is an option to display an alternate field as the header. In this case, category has already been correctly selected. So I'll select the subcategory ID. Instead of displaying the ID number, I would rather display the subcategory name. And instead of displaying the product sort number, I'd rather display the actual product name. So now when I click OK, the names are displayed, but the information is still properly organized. Notice the Tools section, which had the category ID number of 1, is at the top of the list. So now that I've imported my data and I've grouped it together properly, I can now transform this mock-up layout into a template. And that's what we'll be doing in the next episode, so stay tuned for Part 3. If you have any questions about using Easy Catalog or any other InDesign feature, I'm more than happy to answer them. To ask a question, go to instantindesign.com and click the Ask a Question button.